Hi, this is Andrew Moore Crispin with CampGear.tv, and today we're making a $1 windshield uh, for a stove. I use these for my, my alcohol stoves. Um, so what we're going to need, first off, we're going to need uh, a $1 oven liner. You can get this at pretty much any dollar store. A straight edge in order to make straight cuts. A uh, flexible but stiff wire. We're using 18 gauge here. A knife to make the cuts. We'll need some drill bits. Uh, tap like an actual metal tapping drill bit would be a lot better, but um, in a pinch anything will really do. Basically the largest one you can find. And finally, we may or may not need uh, the rolling pin that we have here. Alright, so let's get started. Uh, first things first, we're going to peel off this um, little piece of paper. We don't really need that. Put it off to the side. Now I am going to uh, use the rolling pin to actually roll down the beaded seams here. I find this is basically the best way to, to do this. What we want is basically a nice flat surface to work with. Alright, so there we have a reasonably flat piece of metal. Now what we're going to want to do is figure out uh, about how high our pot's going to be. You can measure this, I usually just kind of eyeball it. I'm going to say it's going to go right about here. And that way it can actually surround the pot, uh, sit maybe this far into the pot, um, and shield everything from the wind. So we'll just lay our straight edge down here. Looks about right. We need to leave a little bit of extra um, in order to make a, um, a seam that'll actually have the wire inside. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go up to here. Now this is gonna dull our blade, obviously, but uh, that's quite all right. So we'll just start over here, make a cut. All the way across to here. Alright, so there we have the uh, startings of our um, windshield. Okay, our next step is to put the wire um, running along the bottom here so that um, we don't, first off, we won't have a jagged edge, and also so that we can um, mold the thing and actually get it to retain its shape. So we'll take our straight edge again. Go maybe a centimeter and a half. Well, it's about a half an inch, I guess, maybe three quarters. And we're going to score this. So uh, anything we'll really do to score it, I'm going to use a tent spike in this case. So then we have a pretty reliable score line. We can actually begin to fold that up. So now we have a channel that will actually accept our 18 gauge wire. Um, so one of the things I probably should have mentioned, you really will need a pair of pliers for this. Um, in this case, because I didn't say that we needed pliers, I'm just going to cut it with uh, this because I can't be bothered to go back inside and find my pliers. Let's get the score mark going there. Break the wire off thusly. Now we want to have it as straight as we can to get a reliable, a reliable bead across the bottom here. Alright, so our next step is to put the wire into the channel here. So just start it off on one corner, like this. We want to have a couple of uh, extra inches on either side, maybe about an inch on either side. So we'll just fold it down the bottom here, just so we have it kind of latched in so we can try and fit the rest of the uh, wire and get it actually into this channel. I want to be careful you don't cut your fingers here. So we're just going to feed it in like this, and as we go, we're going to fold this seam over. You can actually see the line of the wire, so you want to have this as close to the bottom as you can, basically right in that channel. So here you can see the... Uh, the line and the wire line here. So I'm going to continue this process and we'll come back when it's uh, finished and we're on the other end. Okay, so now we have it more or less done. We have the uh, wire running along the channel here. Coming out the other end, we'll just fold this end over so that it stays out of our way. Now we're going to get our rolling pin again and we're going to roll this seam just to, uh, just to push it down as much as we can.
there we go. Oh. So our next step is actually to drill some holes in here across the bottom for air intake. So we'll, uh, we'll do that, come back when we have the drill. Alright, so now we're going to start drilling a few holes. Um, ordinarily I'd mark this up, but we're just going to kind of go every, I don't know, inch and a half, two inches or so. So we'll start on one edge here. And like I said, it would be better to have a, uh, an actual metal tapping bit, um, but this will do in a pinch. Um, in fact, we shouldn't be going from this side, we're going to be going from this side. Uh, that way we can roll out uh, any ugly, any ugly um, and jagged seams that we might get. So the key here is to take it slow because uh, it's a soft metal. So we want to... There you go, so that's one. I'm going to continue this process. Um, I, I believe this would be a little bigger, we'll just make a few extras. Um, I'll go one and two here, actually I might as well continue right now. Just for extra air intake. Like I said, a bigger hole would be better. But there we have it, and I'll uh, come back when we actually have more of these drilled. So I will mention here, in addition to going slow, it's also important to, um, to ease up on the pressure. You can see we have a couple here that... Uh, it got a little bit ugly. We can roll those out, but uh, it's more ideal if they just kind of come out nice and clean to begin with. So in addition to um, taking it easy on the speed, you have to take it easy on the pressure as well. So like this. You can feel a little bit of a pop when the thing is actually um, let go. So we'll continue, like I said, and uh, come back when it's finished. All right, so here we have it with all of the um, air inlet holes drilled out. I've got a couple of little messy bits here. Um, just clean those up. Um, in many cases, they'll just kind of fold, and with metal fatigue, will fall off. But uh, some of them, you got to be kind of careful not to uh, not to rip the thing as you um, as you start to clean it up. Just try and pull these little chads out. Get rid of those. And now we have a, uh, well, at least the startings of a completed windscreen here. So we're going to do one more step and then we should be good to go. Okay, so now for our last step, we're just going to give it a uh, final roll here. So what we're doing here is we're flattening any, um, any ugly little bits on the, on the uh, air inlet holes. And also starting to curve the thing a little bit more. And now, um, the way I use these is I actually nest it around my pot in my, uh, in my kit. So there we have it, just like this, and then uh, I'll actually nest it inside the uh, carry case for my pot, wrapped around the pot so that it always pretty much retains its shape. Um, you can roll it a little bit more like this to get the initial curve properly in place. And then anytime you need to use it, you can just... Uh, you fit the pot handle out here, sit it down on the ground like this, and then I've actually found that the uh, pot is what kind of lends some structural integrity to the thing. But there you have it, a pretty reliable little windscreen that will cost you about, uh, well, depending how much you get the wire for, I guess, and assuming you have all the tools, maybe a, a buck ten. So for more great camping gear reviews, how-tos, and uh, helpful news, hit up campgear.tv. Until next time, I'm Andrew Moore Crispin. Thanks for watching.